What's up guys, War here, and today I'm gonna to be bringing you a news update. Adam Fletcher, AKA Pez Radar, just tweeted out three minutes ago that we got some brand new patch notes that are gonna be coming or implemented into season three of Diablo 4. Okay, later this evening, they will be doing it. It's tonight, the day of recording of this video. There's, they're gonna be addressing some feedback that they've been hearing uh, more surrounding the basically our pet and then the arcane tremors as well as the echo of malvis okay so we're going to go over all these notes just to see what the brand new update is so let's get right into the update so echo of malvis developer note we have noticed that players tended to use their pearls of warding for fighting echo of malvis instead of zoltan's warding which is that's the warding that you get from doing the vaults where they are adding an indigenous cores okay or indigenous of course, you guys are probably going to butcher me in the comments about that, but I probably pronounced it wrong. Oh, well, anyway, a new item solely for summoning Malphus instead of using the pearls. So players do not have to choose between extra protection in the vaults or fighting boss. That's actually kind of cool. Additionally, we have uh, we've made the fight against Malphus a little bit more difficult, but we get better rewards. This is actually really nice. I enjoyed the fight overall. I thought it was pretty awesome. But let's get into these updates because, boy, they are juicy. So Elko of Malphus had their level raised from 85 to 100. This is good. I don't think it needed to be 85. It needs to be 100. It's a brand new boss. It's going gonna, it's gonna to serve like Duriel. It's supposed to be this monumental fight that you get from doing all this. I think that's a good change. The health pool has been increased by 30%. Makes sense. A new item, the cores, now exists for the purpose of accessing the Uber Vault and Echo of Malphus. Confirm player-facing names. This item replaces the uses of Pearls of Warding and providing success. That's good. Uh, the cores have a chance to drop from Vault Heralds and are guaranteed to drop from Sun of Malphus in World Tier 4. That's actually really nice. So we're going to be able to farm these pretty good. Loot updates. The drop rate of unique stones from Malphus has been increased from 0.25 to 0.5. So a 25% increase. So this is really good. Um... I mean, again, the stones aren't like too crazy, but like that is a good buff. Unique stones have a 3% dropping or 3% chance of dropping from chest after the boss. That's kind of cool. Um, it's, that's 1% better than Uber Uniques. So you're probably gonna have to farm for a little bit. Defeating Echo of Malphus will now reward more legendary items. Additionally, item level 925 will drop more often. This is kind of nice. Again, I just don't think that before we get into the rest with Echo of Malphus, just people aren't fighting him. Okay, people just aren't fighting him. They don't really want to fight him, farm all this stuff. But I hope that with these changes, we'll have to see how it is and test it after the patch goes live. And uh, we'll kind of see how it is. Now, let's get on to the Seneschal, everybody's favorite pet. Okay, um, developer note, we've received feedback that the Seneschal does not feel powerful. Not even close. So I had somebody comment on my YouTube video about this. Hey, here's a good question. What does the campaign, uh, the companion we get use? I replied and I was just like, hey, pick any runes you want to put on the pet. Doesn't really add anything to your power level. He wanted to get some more additional information, but all in all, like it just doesn't do anything. I think if you started alternate characters or even started this season, if you wanted to experience it, you could. But otherwise, you can basically just play without the pet and it's the same game. It's sad for me to say that, but let's see what the changes are. The Seneschal becomes more powerful as it, as it reaches max level. Well, before we get into any of the changes, getting it to max level is a very, very daunting task. It's about 20 times as long as it was for the Vampiric Powers. And I know everybody loves a grind, but one big issue with the leveling in this, and I talked about this on my live stream, is that the stones are randomly dropped. You have to get multiple stones for it to level so if you need 30 points to go from level three to four or two to three you have to find that same stone three times and it's a completely random drop it's not like the vampiric powers where you can get the potent blood and just use the blood to just upgrade your powers and then when you start an alternate character you just have a bunch of the blood and you can just level up all your stuff so because it's completely random it's going to take forever to do it but i digress let's see what we got here uh, we have, but we have noticed that many players have not had the chance to level them up. Exactly. We are introducing multiple changes to ensure that players have more sources to earn governing and tuning stones. So they may level up their Seneschal and lock their new companions full potential. 
All right, let's check it out. Let's see. Crafting a governing or tuning stone will now always cost 200 shattered stones and 20 iron chunks regardless of level. Finding a max level governing or tuning stone will now grant shattered stones. Okay. Governing and tuning stones now can be acquired as rewards for completing whispers. This is very good. Son of Malthus will now always drop two to three governing and tuning stones. This is a fantastic change because we used to maybe get one, maybe get two at the most. It was typically always one and it was random between governing and tuning. So this is good. This will really help us do that. Stones awarded from the stone caches has been increased uh, from one to two stones. This is really good. Experiment Experience requirements for go uh, governing and tuning stones have been reduced so they can be ranked up more naturally with your leveling experience. So I'm curious to what that is because as I just explained, you need to find three of them to go from two to three or is it three to four? And then it, it increases as the levels go up. So I'm curious to see how much of a reduction that is to make it easier. Because I can tell you right now, before these changes, nobody's gonna take the time to level up these stones from one to 10 before these changes. So overall, I think these changes are really nice here. We're gonna see how they go. I think the always drop from two a piece is really nice. Um, and then getting them as you uh, complete whispers, cause you get both. You get governing and tuning as you complete rewards for uh, the Tree of Whispers. So that's really good. Now let's go to Vault and Arcane Tremors. We've had multiple quality of life changes to the player experience in the Vault and Arcane Tremors. Consuming a Pearl of Warding at the statue now grants 10 stacks of Zotan's Warding. Oh my God, instead of three. So in the lower tiers, it was like four to open up the second chest. Now you pop two of these wardings these pearls and you just blast through the dungeon this is such a good quality of life change big dub there blizzard this is how it should be the max stats have been increased that makes sense because we're going to be able to farm a lot of these the grace period for losing stacks of zoltan's warding has when being hit by multiple traps has been increased from one to 1.5 seconds example if three darts hit you in a span of 1.5 seconds you lose one stack instead of three that's good Herald of Malthus now guarantees a item or legendary item drop starting at level 26 with a 15% chance to drop a second one. I actually really like that. So when you're out in the open world, when you're farming those things, you get some gear. That's really nice. Knockback has re been removed from all obelisk hazards. Yes. How annoying is that? I mean, the fireballs hit you. I get it. You're supposed to take some damage, but the knockback is super annoying. Chests will now appear after completing the vault's ending encounter. These new chests will drop a guaranteed legendary item starting from level 26. 35% chance to drop another one. Super good. Love this. The projectile speed from elemental dart hazards has been reduced by 20%. The hitbox floor-based elemental grate and spikes have been reduced by 15%. That's kind of nice. And then the spout hitbox has been reduced by 15%. Good changes on the Arcane Tremors and Vaults. All a big dub here. This is really, really nice. And then there's some bug fixes here. So overall, guys, these are really, really good changes. I know that a lot of people have been really not liking the brand new season and especially the season theme and mechanics. So these are really, really good changes that are coming. I think this will really help the experience overall. We are really going to have to see how long it's going to take to level up these stones now with these changes because i am curious like how strong could the pet be with all of your stones at level 10 you get the unique stones for the plus four ranks and all this stuff so uh i'm really curious about that i love these changes now i'm probably going to run vaults more than just normal nightmare dungeons this seems really really cool so yeah guys these are the brand new changes coming to, to uh, Diablo 4 Season 3. Uh, it should be live later tonight. I'm going to link this down in the description below. Like the video, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.